hey, hello, I'm Kroka, also known as Chorus Cornix, and welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast, where I pick a game, I play it for a week, and then I talk about it. This week's game is Melody of Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Originally, it was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2001, but the version I played was on the PSN store, and it was released in 2023, and it's a tactical espionage game developed by Konami Computer Entertainment and published by Konami, and also will be spoilers up ahead, just so you know, but first a little backstory. So I used to own the... Uh, the substance version of this game and it's a lot more vast it has a lot more goodies than the original Sons of Liberty had but I don't know what happened to that game probably I lended it to one of my brothers or and or sisters and uh yeah it's just gone now so before I start to talk about the game I need to explain something this will not be a deep dive because this game has uh, <laughs> a lot of crazy story plots and it's very deep uh so when you start up the game you have this pre-menu which makes you, you know, you just start up a new game, game selection, you get the master book, which explains about, it's basically the bios of all the characters and plot and stuff like that. Then you have the screenplay book, which is literally uh, the script for for the game, which is kind of cool. Then you have downloadables, which is self-explanatory. Then you have options, and there's like an eternal link with legal stuff. So before we get to the other menu, and yes, there are many menus, <laughs> you're treated to a cinematic intro with credits. And then the HD edition uh, rolls in, which was made in 2012, I think. At that part, you can start playing the game. So there's new game, load game, options, and special. And in special, you have the photos that you can take because you get a camera once you complete one of the chapters, either tanker or the, uh, the plant. You can learn some basic actions, and you have the dog tags, and you have the special actions. And the dog tags are kind of interesting. They will earn you bonuses the more you collect, and you collect these from soldiers in the game by holding them up. Then you have the missions, and this is this is really cool, by the way. You have VR missions, you have alternate missions, and you have the snake tails, which is my favorite, where you play a snake just before Raiden arrives at the plant, and you go ahead and do other missions. So the episode that I played for this week was the tanker episode, because that's my favorite, hands down. So there's an intro cutscene where... Um, Snake is on a bridge, he is walking in the rain, smoking a cigarette, and Snake, by the way, is this badass mercenary kind of guy. He's a clone as well, so this story is very complicated and convoluted the deeper you go. So he's smoking a, a cigarette, and he throws out his raincoat, he puts on his stealth camouflage, and he bungee jumps down to the boat below, where uh, Revolver Ocelot, which was a character in the previous game, he's watching him from afar in a shopper, and Snake gets a codec call from Otacon. So Otacon is basically Snake's helper over a codec, like a, think of a codec as a phone that no one can hear but you. It's basically inside of your body. There's a lot of weird things going on with this game. There are these things called nanomachines, which are small machines that live in a body that can do amazing things to people. Uh, yeah, so Snake gets a codec call from Otacon, and he needs to get visual confrontation of this new Metal Gear called Metal Gear Ray and it's in the hold somewhere uh, and while this is happening there's a long cutscene explaining everything, multiple um, codec calls as well and also the uh, the marines on the ship get assassinated by Ocelot's crew and Gorlukovic so they're Russians and they basically cut down everyone and replace the original crew so this is brutal right off the bat so of course the Russians wants to get their hands on this new prototype Metal Gear thing and uh, this is just pure awesomeness, in my opinion. And now you can finally start to play. So this is a huge complaint that some people have about this game. It's like watching a movie, because all the cutscenes and codec call, they take very, very long to go through. But luckily, you can skip them. So um, you can call Otacon at any time, and uh, he will get you some helpful tips. You can save the game and stuff like that. So Snake and Otacon are part of this organization called the Philanthropy, and they are basically um, an organization that are anti metal Gear, so that's what they do now. So Snake's main objective now is to get to the bridge of the ship and figure out where the ship is going. He also needs to have some photographic evidence of the new Metal Gear Ray, because they need to prove that the Marines has been working on this new prototype. So depending on what difficulty you choose at the beginning of the game, you are forced to enter the ship through different doors because some of the doors are open and while others are locked. And then you go through a locker area and avoid some guards and you use this gun called the Beretta M92F or M9 for short, which fires tranquilizer uh, rounds. So depending on where you hit with this gun, if you hit them in the head and the heart, they go down directly, while if you shoot them in the hand or leg, they uh, it takes longer for the tranquilizing effect to happen. And then you go through a launch area with an open bar. And this is kind of cool because, at least back in the day it was, everything is destructible in the bar, you can shoot everything. 
And then you also go through a storage area, which has a lot of cool stuff. And in the storage area, you can find a, a box, a cardboard box. And that's a, a staple of the Metal Gear Solid games. You can actually sneak around the whole game in different cardboard boxes and even fool some of the guards with it. So right outside the storage area, there are these laser barriers. And if you cross them, everything will explode. And it, it's explained to you that later in the game scenario that the whole ship is rigged with explosives like Semtex and, well, C4. So you can crawl under this barrier and you can use the same trick that you did in the first Metal Gear game. You can use your smokes to basically, um, you, you know, reveal the lasers. You can also shoot a fire extinguisher and that will reveal the, uh, the hidden laser beams. So you do crawl under the laser so you go the other way around and try to avoid a camera. So the anime AI is kind of interesting. The, uh, they have routes that they go to check out if they hear noises and stuff. And if you get discovered during any part of the mission, uh, you can choose to run away and hide. And there are a couple of places you can hide. You can hide yourself in lockers in, or in ventilation shafts. And you can also hide enemy bodies or unconscious enemies in lockers. And if you shake a sleeping enemy that you will put down or knocked out, you will get some rations or some ammo and stuff. And there's actually, uh, I had this guide and I still have it. There is like a percent chance of what the guards actually drop, depending on how many times you shake them. And if you shake them enough, they will wake up. So that's a useful mechanic when you try to get the dog tag. So you need to separate the guards and drag them away and wake them up at different places. Uh, it's kind of convoluted to explain, but it's all fun to collect dog tags in the end and get the special bonuses. And eventually Snake will reach the bridge and that leads to a confrontation with Gorlukovic's daughter, Olga. And you, well, you fight her, you shoot out some lights, distract her enough to get in some shots. And at this point, it's very useful to know the first person shooting mechanic because you can aim at the different body parts and take her out quickly. And after you beat her in the battle, you will grab her gun. And after that, Snake gets photographed by a cipher, this military drone. So during the battle, Snake gets told that Olga is actually pregnant or he overhears Olga talking to her father over the phone. And uh, I kind of felt bad afterwards because you are shooting her with tranquilizer darts and I don't, I'm not sure that's good for the baby at all. So I mentioned it briefly, but during this mission you also collect dog tags and there are dog tags on every difficulty from very easy, easy, normal, hard, extreme and European extreme I believe as well. So you collect these dog tags in order to get some items in the game. So you get the bandana which gives you infinite ammo. Uh, and then you collect for the stealth camouflage, which is the coolest item in the game, I think. So now Snakes needs to go down to the hold area to get some photographic evidence of the new Metal Gear Ray. So uh, a cool thing you can do with the gun, by the way, I forgot to say, but you can shoot out cameras. Uh, and you can also take out cameras temporarily by using shaft grenades. So there's some uh, magnetic uh, jamming going on with those grenades. So if you get discovered by any of the guards or if they're suspicious and whatnot, there are different kind of modes. So you have the high alert, you have the caution, you have the evasion. And while in caution, they look more or less everywhere. They're very thorough in their search. Um, but this game is like Pac-Man as well. You have some blind spot that the guards will never look and that's kind of cool. Yeah, you can crawl into ventilation shaft and hide in certain lockers. And if you are lucky, they will just check some lockers and you will just get by. So now Snake is in the hold, uh, trying to sneak by the Marines, and uh, you can't use lethal force on them because, well, they're nice upstanding Marines. So there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can go below, mid, or top. So if you go top, you need to get your uh, grip level up. So you can actually do pull-ups in this game to <laughs> increase your grip level to level two so you can hang longer. By doing so, you get uh, a better vantage when you take the photos. You can go below, so you crawl under the Marines, and there's a funny thing where one of the Marines actually dropped their magazines, and uh, the other guy that stands next to him says, like, yeah, forget about it. And the ma magazine almost drops his snake's head, which is kind of funny. You can go mid, and then you go through the Marines crawling, sneaking, avoiding stepping on the metal plates, making sounds and stuff. You can also mess with the projectors, which has a hidden Easter egg where... Uh, <laughs> There's like a Japanese girl that if you turn the projector on and off or switch them, there will be a Japanese girl on one of the, the screens and that will kind of draw attention to, to you as well because they, they will fi finally figure out like who's messing with these projectors, right? And meanwhile, this is happening. Scott, the commandant, is having the speech and that's the whole point that the uh, Marines are distracted in the first place. That's also good and bad for you when you take your photos, but you have to be kind of observant because at any time the com commandant can say like, 
look to the red, right, look to the left, stretch a bit. And uh, you can even say like intruder in the back and stuff. So you have to be really careful when you sneak around to take your photos, at least on higher difficulties. So once you take in all the photos from the left, right, front and the marine logo, you can upload them on a PC that Otacon has hacked. You can also do another thing. There's a hidden Easter egg where you can take pictures of ghosts. And yes, there are ghosts in this game, hidden ghosts. Uh, you can also take pictures of scantily women and he will react to that accordingly. And you can also take pictures of cute kitties. And uh, it's a lot of small funny things in this game. So once the photos are uploaded, Ocelot takes over the ship, he kills Karlukovic, double crosses him, he shoots and kills Scots, he takes the metal gear and he blows up the ship. But before that happened, he actually, there's a thing that happens. In the first game, Ocelot lost his hand due to the cyborg ninja and for some reason he chose to transplant Liquid's arm to his stump. I don't know why that's really stupid, so the arm takes over, really weird, something about genes and nanomachines I guess. And uh, so he has a double personality now, I guess. So Snake confronts Liquid Ocelot and it doesn't go too well and uh, Snake is left for dead in the wreckage. So after you beat the tanker episode, you will get the digital camera and depending on how many dog tags you collected, you get other bonuses and stuff like the bandana and the uh, stealth camouflage. And once you've beaten a game, you get an actual rank in form of an animal. So if you are sneaky and fast, you get like night owl or squirrel or something like that. And a normal rank is actually a tarantula. You kill a couple of people, you, you know, perform mildly good. So there are some cool ranks. And the best rank you can actually get is big boss. Then you, you don't kill anyone, you do it as fast as possible. And I, I have never achieved that ever. And now it's time for the controversial part, or at least when the game came out. Not a lot of people like Raiden, I guess. They wanted to play Snake, but they got this emo uh, white-haired kid instead. So the plant episode is basically you are all on an oil cleanup facility, which is basically just a cover-up for a thing called Arsenal Gear, which is uh, run by AI, and uh, it has a lot of Metal Gear rays on it, let's just say that. So the main plot is the president was visiting this, this plant on this very day, or some day prior, I guess, and he got captured by the terrorists, and uh, he's been held hostage. So Ryan comes in to save the day. He's a former child soldier raised by Solidus, which is also a clone of Big Boss, go figure. Uh, that lead in some to some hostage drama, some bomb defusal, and other things. So this whole thing is controlled by the Patriot AI, which is this shadow organization that's been in the background all along, apparently. So it turns out that the, the people you've been talking to by Kodak, Colonel, and Rose, they may not actually be real, which is kind of weird. So Metal Gear has this thing where the plot is co too convoluted for its own good, but I love it. It's like lengthy cutscenes and there's a lot of stuff going on and I, I don't even know the full story myself at this point. So Snake is actually part of the storyline as well. So he uh, he pretends to be one of the SEALs, like Navy SEALs, go by the name Pliskin and he helps Raiden right throughout the game via codec. You can also put him to sleep with the M9 in a part of the game or you can shake him loose for some dog tags and you get the Solid Snake dog tag, the Liquid dog tag and even Kojima's dog tag, which is kind of cool. And then we have Ocelot, so he's been working for the Patriots all along, like a puppet master thing, and apparently the Patriots have been doing this for a very long time. It's not even clear if they are around or if they're like real or digital or whatever. But anyway, Ocelot has been like this like since the beginning of the Metal Gear franchise. He's basically a double agent and you can't trust him. He, you don't even know what side he's on. And of course Olga is here as well, now she's working with Otacon and Snake, uh, so she is portraying the cyborg ninja, so she runs around on a facility acting like a, a cyborg ninja, I guess. And now it's time to talk about the new threat, Dead Cell, so there are a couple of members. So you have Fat Man, which is basically a fat bald man with a bomb defusal suit on, and he wants revenge on a guy called Peter Stillman, his former mentor I think it was. So he's responsible for putting bombs all over the plant. And Raiden is yeah, forced to defuse it. So you have to fight him on a helipad while he is having like rollerblades or inlines. I guess you just call them skates and it's kind of stupid. And then we have Vamp, a Romanian, a wizard with knives. He drinks blood. He is super fast. He can even run on water. Uh, so you fight him in this water filtration chamber and while trying to find Emma Emmerich, which is Otacon's stepsister. And this plot is convoluted. And then we have Fortune, I like to call her Little Miss Fortune instead. Uh, she is the daughter of Scott, the commandant from the previous episode that died. She has psychic power, she can stray bullets, and grenades will not explode while near her. 
so she has this really cool gun, the uh, the rifle, the rail gun from the first Metal Gear like unit. So the, the the boss fight is not really a boss fight. You just avoid her while she shoot this huge ass rail gun that it's impossible to carry by a woman of her size. But nonetheless, it's a really cool boss fight. And then we have the leader of the Dead Cell itself. Solidus. He was also a former president, which is kind of funny. Uh, he's also a clone of Big Boss and a brother to Liquid and Solid Snake, and also the man that raised right into be who he is today. So you fight him on top of Federal Hall with some actually high frequency blade, which is actually kind of cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think you fight him before in a Harry yet where you have a Stinger missile launcher and you try to shoot down a plane. So this game is crazy and all over the place, and I love it. So gameplay, stop the bad guys to save the world in the end, I, I think you do it in that order. <laughs> Control, the left stick moves the character around, the right stick is camera, and aiming of course. R1 is first person view, X is crouch, and if you do that in a running motion you will actually do a roll and you can crawl in this mode as well. Uh, L1 is auto aim in third person, triangle button interacts with things such as doors and stuff, the square button shoots. And also punches if you don't have a like a gun up or whatever and the circle button is throw or strangle you can also quick tap the r2 button to reload certain weapons graphics so the graphics hasn't <laughs> aged that well in my opinion some of the textures are really blurry others are just poorly upscaled or whatever but the thing i really like about the game it has a, this industrial vibe to it so if you look at pipes and valves and bulkheads and stuff throughout the episodes they look credible and believable. There was one thing that kind of blew me away uh, back in the day on the PS2. So when you're down in the hold, you have your USB uh, equipped gun and it has a built-in flashlight. So you can actually pan over the pipes and it casts shadows. And I thought that was really cool, at least back then, because, oh, that, that, that looks like almost photorealistic. Of course, now it doesn't, but back then it was super awesome. Sound and music. Harry George Williams and Norio... Hubino made the soundtrack for this game and the soundtrack is actually dynamic so what you're doing the music kind of follows what you do if that makes sense so if you're in high alert there is more intense if you're in caution the music kind of gets well more cautious I guess and while waiting it's kind of this tension going on you're hiding in a locker perhaps and you just don't want to be found and the music reflects that perfectly it's it's actually well balanced and done. Easter egg secrets and glitches. So there are a lot of them in this game. So one of them is when you're in a codec call, you can press the L1 and L2 button while prompting some really funny answers from the main character. You can also move the left stick and the right stick around to move the camera of the codec around. You can press down on the thumbsticks, the R3 and L3, I believe, to zoom in and zoom out. It has no purpose, but it's kind of funny. During the tanker episode, there is a chance that you might see Ocelot's feet, and you can send a picture of that to Otacon if you're quick enough with the camera. There's also a funny easter egg where uh, in the plant section of the game where you play as right, and you can actually catch up on Snake when he sneaks upon one of the struts in a cardboard box, and you can shoot on him, and uh, so he, his box basically breaks, and when you call, up, call him up on a codec, he's actually pissed. We also have the legendary Konami code, so if you punch in that code at the end of a completed chapter, Snake will say something funny or remark on it. And during Raiden's episode, you can actually find Easter eggs, like real physical Easter Island statues. I don't know, I, I didn't see them in my playthrough, but apparently they're there. In conclusion, I wrote, yes, play it if you're a Metal Gear fan. So back in the day, I played this game so much, and it's actually kind of a funny story where the main game disc, like this DVD, was so scratched up because I've skipped it so many times at the beginning of the Tanker episode. So at some point, it refused to play, or I have to, like, get some work around around it, I guess. But I enjoyed it for what it is. It, of course, it hasn't aged well, and there's some long cutscenes and some codec calls. And the storytelling about nanomachines and AI is just over the top and stupid. And that I love because it's like, it's too much. It's too much for its own good. It just, just go to bed and sleep a bit. You don't need to do this. You don't have to... <laughs> like telling a, an old granny to shut up or something. <laughs> Dude, it's for your own good, right? I also like to collect the dog tags and get the bonuses and stuff. And that's something I forgot to talk about in Ryan's section. He actually gets different wigs instead of like the bandana. He gets the infinite wig. He gets a wig that makes him breathe longer underwater. He even has a grip wig, which is orange, I believe, if I remember correctly. It's just, oh, it's so stupid. And of course, he gets the stealth suit as well. So uh, 
I I enjoyed this game, and if, if you're a Metal Gear fan, pick it up. It's on the PSN store for relatively cheap, so there you go. So anyway, thanks for listening and for watching, and take care.